Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about the R. Kelly trial. This video was suggested by Cortez Miller. Two more of R. Kelly's accusers take the stand in Chicago to testify against R. Kelly. One of them was a 37 year old woman testifying under the fictitious name of Pauline. She claimed that she was friends with R. Kelly's goddaughter. According to her, she went looking for Jane. They were using that name as a pseudonym when she was 14. She found Jane and she was naked kneeling in front of R. Kelly. Allegedly, he told Pauline that he was looking for bruises on Jane because she hurt herself. Pauline stated that's not how you look for bruises. And he said that's how he looked for bruises. Then he stated we all have secrets. After that, R. Kelly directed her to have sex with him and Jane. She claims they had sex dozens of, of times between the ages of 14 to 16. R. Kelly also provided alcohol, but mainly hypnotic. Pauline stated that she also had a threesome with a girl named Brittany. R. Kelly would record it on camera using a tripod. The tapes were kept in a gym bag. Y'all, something doesn't sound right with this. R. Kelly is wrong for having sex with teenagers. However, I feel like these girls knew what they were doing. Pauline claims she was in a relationship with R. Kelly for years as an adult. At the age of 20, she called his studio acting as if she was Britney and asked for money. Pauline goes on to say he called it extortion, but she called it don't play with me. She said that she was trying to get his attention since she hadn't heard from him. Pauline testified, girls get mad and say stupid stuff and want to slap you or bust your car windows out. It was just a threat. He knew that. If he didn't know, he wouldn't have had me around all those years. Pauline uttered, I loved him and I still love him in a weird way. I know you might judge me, but it's like best friend meets boyfriend meets dad. Wow, these women are something else. If you loved him, ain't no way you would be testifying against him. And there you are stalking the man. This is unbelievable, but let me get back to the story. By this time, Bun Jean stepped in. He is the one who is representing R. Kelly. Bun Jean said the relationship began when Pauline was an adult, legally. He began his cross-examination. According to Pauline, her phone call was about something that happened inappropriate on the tour bus, not about underage sex. So, Bun Jean said, in an effort to extort R. Kelly for $35,000, you didn't lead with your best stuff, did you? He said... It seems if you really want to get someone's attention, you might mention, oh, we had an illicit relationship as a minor. In 2019, Pauline had revealed to law enforcement that she ran into Kelly and Naked Jane. Bunjean said she failed to disclose any information about what she saw. Pauline said, oh, I didn't fail. I was just a scared minor. So that's how I re reacted to it. R. Kelly's representative noted that Pauline had given varying estimates of how many times they had sexual encounters. Pauline stated it was a lengthy period of time. She said, you could say 100, you could say 200. We effed a lot. Bunjean talked about the hypnotic alcohol. He said hypnotic wasn't released until 2002, the year Pauline turned 18. He stated you couldn't have been drinking hypnotic when you were 14. And Pauline said, okay, but I was still drinking. So I guess we can say he caught Pauline in a lie right there. Then she is using profanity on the stand. Who does that? Back to the trial. Pauline said hypnotic stands out because it was R. Kelly's favorite. He used to mix it with Hennessy and cocktail. He called the Incredible Hulk. Well, he called it the Incredible Hulk. The prosecutors had asked Pauline to describe a sex act. She said, sucking loudly. A little bit before lunch break, another accuser took the stand and she went by Tracy. She was quiet and sad. Allegedly, Tracy met R. Kelly when she was 16 in 1999. She was an intern at a record label. She testified not long afterward, R. Kelly gave her his number and told her to call him while at an expo. When she called, he invited her to his studio where he got her in the office area alone. According to Tracy, he told her that he liked her and she told him that she was 16. She said, he's like, okay, he told me he was 23. They kissed, however, she declined to give him all. Then, he pleasured himself on her. She tried to pull back, but he had a hold on her shirt. When R. Kelly saw that she was upset, he said he was really sorry and he didn't mean to upset her. He promised that it wasn't his usual behavior. About a week later, he sexually assaulted her in a hotel room, she stated. She explained that she told him 
She didn't want to have intercourse, but he forced himself on her. When she asked him to stop, he did. On one early summer of 1999, she visited R. Kelly at the Chicago Track Studio. He told her, this time, we are going to have sex and it will probably hurt. But she has to let him finish. They had intercourse in the attic, which was called the Sky Room. Over the next year, they had those encounters about 50 times, including with other girls. Tracy began to cry softly when talking about the threesome with Jane and Kelly. I mean, y'all, correct me if I'm wrong. She wasn't crying then, so why cry now? She knew what she was getting into when she kept going back. All right, y'all, back to the trial. She stated R. Kelly told her, Remember, you said you wanted to please me? He told her to take off her clothes. He proceeded to bring naked Jane in the room. Tracy said she was confused because she thought she was the only one Robert was talking to. However, they just seemed very familiar with each other. She was the only one who didn't know. Tracy stated that R. Kelly told her to stop being a baby. He then set up the cameras and the microphone and directed them. According to her, their relationship ended in 2001 when she turned 18. During cross-examination, Bunjean asked Tracy about conflicting statements about her age. He stated, I know you call yourself a minor, but at no point did you ever allege that you were under the age of 17 when you had an encounter with R. Kelly. Tracy responded, I'm sorry that it's not correct. I have always told the truth about how old I was. Bunjean began to show Tracy records from the lawsuit filed in 2001. It included an affidavit she signed saying she became an intern in 2000 of April, not 1999. Phone records also showed that she didn't have any contact with R. Kelly in 1999. Tracy answered and told the lawyer that someone must have made a mistake because she spoke the truth. So they caught Tracy in a lie. All right, y'all, back to the story again. I know I keep putting in my little two cents, but you know. When thinking back on the experience with Jane, Tracy looked weary. She kept her eyes down or tilted toward the ceiling. Whenever she couldn't recall something, she'd apologize or ask for the question to be repeated in a quiet voice. Bunjean became very annoyed with her. With each, I'm so sorry, Bunjean stated, you don't need to apologize to me. Just tell the truth. That was the end of that. What do y'all think about this case? Is everything R. Kelly's fault? More women are coming to testify against Kelly. Three women have already testified that R. Kelly's team paid them to bring the homemade videos. R. Kelly, who is 55, is currently being charged with 13 counts. The trial is getting very weird. My mind's telling me no, but my body, my body's telling me yes, baby. I don't want to hurt nobody, but there is something that I must confess. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to comment like and subscribe if you want to see more videos hit the bell thanks for watching and until next time bye bye